Excuse me, I'm going to take a back. Bob, do you have Diane there? One second. Let me bring up the attendees. It's two, three. Uh, here she is. All right, I'm going to move her over. Oh, good. Okay, we'll see you again. How many school communities have we? Oh, we're live, I forgot. Never mind. Wow. Okay, did you find Diana? I did. Uh, you see she's in here. She can talk. So, yes, yeah, she's she's in there she's with the phone set. number. Yep. She's also okay. Yep. Okay, so let's get going. And I uh, just want to welcome everybody to the uh, special meeting of the Worcester School Committee. Uh, we're going to be discussing the pilot of a high school ELA virtual curriculum for 2021. And before we do that, we're going to do a roll call for attendance and open the meeting. Uh, Madam Cork. Ms. Biancaria. Mrs. Clancy. Mrs. Clancy. More is frozen. Laura? Okay, keep going. Mr. Foley? Here. Ms. McCullough? Here. Mr. Monfredo? Here. Ms. Novick? Here. Mayor Petty? Here. And did I hear Ms. Leon Carrier? Yes. Yes, yep. I'm here. Thanks, and, thanks. I'm here. And, all, and also Laura Clancy said here. Too. Thank you. And the mayor's here, too. Okay. Yeah, Okay, we are going to go to the city approved the power program ELA virtual curriculum for 2021. Uh, Madam Superintendent, do you want to take it over from here and introduce everyone yeah. that you want to speak? Yes, so uh, when we were uh, putting together our final stages, we're looking at our curriculum. Uh, so uh, all of our students could access learning online. Uh, we decided that we wanted to add additional resources uh, for our uh, grade 9 through 12 students in ELA. So I'm going to ask our manager of curriculum and professional development, um, Dr. Ganyas, to explain from this point. Dr. Ganyas. Good evening. Thank you for having me here today to share this with all of you. And I am also um, joined today by the ELA liaison for our district, Colleen Dyer. So she will also be um, supporting any of this material that I'm sharing with you this evening. So I'm going to share my screen with you and just share some slides that we have prepared um, to share with all of you. Um, Bob or Andrew, I'm not able to share my screen. Yeah, uh, one second. Okay, let's give it a try now. Thank you. So as Mrs. Benenda shared, um, I'm Magdalena Ganyas. I'm the manager of curriculum and professional learning. And our office is the Office of Curriculum and Professional Learning. And I am really proud and honored to be working with this most amazing team of curriculum liaisons and we support all learners within the district principals coaches teachers to help support them to uh, be the most effective um, teachers and staff that they can be in relation to curriculum and anything with professional learning so today we're really going to um, talk to you just a little bit about one of the pilots that we hope to do for the fall as our students shift to remote learning. And I just wanted to um, take a few moments just to share that during a regular school year, when we conduct a pilot, we are usually looking at three different companies and we have those companies share their both online and print materials and they also provide a variety of supports. And we usually spread these three different textbooks to different schools so that we have input across the district. And when we take the feedback from these schools, we take feedback from principals, from teachers, from department heads, from students. We really do take that information 
from a variety of um, users and sources. As we move into the school year, we are not able to move forward with a typical pilot. And so we are looking to conduct a modified pilot for this fall for English language arts for grades nine through 12. And we are moving forward with this program through McGraw-Hill called StudySync. And it is both a print and digital program and um, it, it implements models both online and offline. And so I wanted to just share why we chose StudySync. We had a very in-depth pilot in the middle school last year, and there were multiple books and online programs that we just really used very um, in-depth in different schools. And the middle school principals, teachers, department heads, and students chose the middle school version of Study Sync. So we really felt as though that that endorsement from the middle school was one of the main reasons why we chose this for the high school pilot. And so I wanted to um, just begin by sharing with you who the authors of Study Sync are. Um, many of us read and follow um, Doug Fisher and Nancy Frey, and they really have multiple books that are published and um, something that we use in the, across the district for critical and close reading strategies. And another author is Katlyn Tucker, and Katlyn Tucker is someone that we've followed very closely. She really is an expert in blended learning. Blended learning is either in or out of the classroom using um, a teacher-centered station, a student independent working station, and then a station that thoughtfully incorporates technology. And she has met with all of our middle school teachers. She's done a webinar for our entire district. And um, she's also a teacher herself. She's you know, very widely known for all of her work with blended learning. And um, I encourage you all to follow her um, on Twitter. She's posted some amazing pieces. And so um, just as we start to really think about um, choosing textbooks or resources or materials, we really just wanted to begin by really stating that the most critical factor in effective teaching is always the teacher. And so any textbook, any resource, any materials, they're all tools that we use in education to build a robust experience, a literacy experience in this case, and to build our lesson plans. So really, we're not saying that any, any textbook or any online resource is you know, in place of our teachers or better than our teachers. Our teachers are really the key here and how they use the materials. And so um, from there, I wanted to share some other considerations that we take in the district when choosing any pilot. Um, Study Sync is compatible with Clever. And so there's, um, once the students log into Clever, all of their online textbooks and platforms and apps are all there for them. And Study Sync is con uh, compatible with Clever. It also syncs with Google Classroom. And so if there's an assignment in Study Sync, the teacher can link it to the Google Classroom and send it out to the students. The, um, the McGraw-Hill Company has worked with us on other textbooks as well, and they offer extensive professional learning at the launch. So should we move forward with this pilot, they are going to be ready to really spend a great deal of time supporting our teachers to learn about the pilot, to learn how to use it in the classroom, and to learn how to share it with their students. And they've also committed to ongoing professional learning support, including um, monthly drop-in hours where teachers can ask questions and um, find support to build lessons, and then also monthly professional learning community support. So there will be communities of teachers that can work together and um, if, learn how to more effectively use the program. So why Study Sync? Why did we choose this program? Um, first and foremost, it's standards based. And this program really allows for teacher design in the lesson. It is not a script. We know that in the past, we, there have been, you know, there are multiple other textbooks and online platforms that are available that offer a script. This does not do that. This really allows for lesson design by the teacher. 
it does exemplify some of our district initiatives. So as I mentioned earlier, the critical and close reading, the real focus on writing, and uh, we can incorporate our SRSD writing right into this program. And it offers all of these blended learning options. So um, our office, um, in collaboration with um, the Office of Instructional Technology and Digital Learning, are really working very closely to thoughtfully incorporate technology and uh, have that as a huge consideration as we uh, move into remote learning. One of the other wonderful features about this, um, this platform, there are over 1700 um, classic and contemporary texts that are available. And within each unit, um, there are some pieces that students have to read. And then there are others where there's a lot of choice. And um, as we think about all of our learners, which we always do, I'll talk about that a little bit more, but there's um, partial translation in a variety of languages, um, not just Spanish. So a, a huge consideration for us also. Some of the embedded features are um, integrated reading and writing. So there's reading and writing throughout the program. And specifically in each unit, um, they focus on certain embedded skills and um, the teachers can really um, have the opportunity to um, focus on those skills and really um, customize those skills for each student. There are features that allow for um, teacher and student collaboration and there's also um, peer review options. And then one of the other features that I will be focusing on in a few of the other slides are the progress monitoring tools. So there are progress monitoring tools that are embedded. There are things that are daily, that are weekly, that are per semester, and then another assessment that's three times per year. And all of those assessments um, adjust appropriately for each student. I wanted to also highlight some of the consideration of diverse authors. So this chart here highlights grades six through 12. As I mentioned earlier, our seventh and eighth grade students are using StudySync. Um, we're focusing on nine through 12 today, but I thought it was very important to really just highlight that um, there is just really a variety of um, authors of color and also female authors. And they do have an extensive list that is um, shared. I didn't um, specifically put that on here today, but I thought this chart was helpful and knowing and understanding um, the the authors that the students would be reading. I'm sharing here a little bit more information on the monitoring progress, as I mentioned earlier. So all students begin with a screening and a diagnostic. They have a benchmark, a benchmark assessment. Um, they move into the instruction and the formative assessments. There's always a review, an end of unit assessment, and then there is um, test practice and um, preparation or state testing if, if, if and when it was needed. So all of those pieces are included. And this next chart here really just highlights the types of assessment. So screening and diagnostic, the benchmark. So it gives you the big picture. It gives you an overview of when the assessments can happen. And then it also shares with you the why. And so um, just really kind of going through this, I think the screening will be really important as we begin this school year. And um, we really need to know where the students are and that assessment will really support teachers in planning and evaluating their students' strengths and diagnosing next steps. I also wanted to highlight some of the other districts that are using StudySync. So I won't read these to you, these are here, but this is just um, a small list, there are others. Uh, in both Massachusetts and Rhode Island, but this is just a highlight of some of the other districts that are using this program. And finally, I wanted to end with um, StudySync's rating on EdReports. EdReports is a um, program that rates all different types of programs in all content areas. And as you can see here, um, really, they do have a very strong rating in both um, alignment and usability in, in several of these areas. And so um, I, I just wanted to take um, just one moment to just share, what if we don't go forward with this pilot? And so um, that, that is a possibility. We can use um, teacher-created materials. 
and there are some free resources that are online. Um, however, it would be more difficult to really um, allow students to follow through with an assessment and also to have um, consistent teaching across the district. So as I, um, as I end, I, I just wanted to um, just also um, share with you that there are, there is a grade book feature that's on with included with StudySync that would be helpful for both teachers and students. Um, this program is um, interchangeable with both print and digital use. So, you know, if and when we're back in the classroom, um, there will be a print option. And um, there are, as I shared before, I just wanted to make sure that I highlighted that there are several um, supports for all learners. Um, the program and it has scaffolds that are embedded and teachers do have the ability to differentiate for all of their students. Okay, uh, great job, Dr. Dinas. And uh, so the motion is going to be to approve the prior to doing so. Uh, does anybody have any questions? No questions, Ms. Ms. Novick? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have a, a number of them. Um, I, I, I think my colleagues are aware I, I was a high school English teacher, so this is um, somewhat where I live. Um, is it possible through the chair for um, for us to get some information from the administration about the um, the teachers that may have been involved in the process of um, deciding on the pilot, please? Um, thank you for your question um, through the, the chair. Um, as I shared at the beginning, this is a modified pilot. We did not go through our typical pilot process for this program. So we, as I shared right at the beginning, we chose this program based on the fact that this was the program that they chose for middle school. This has not gone through a typical pilot process. And we went with the recommendation of the middle school teachers and following through to the high school program. Does that answer your question? So then, there was yes, a group can we? There's a group of middle school teachers then, right? This. Absolutely. So that we had this. Entire, uh, no, it sounds as though essentially what we've done is we're we're doing sort of the the old school. We we had this in middle school, so we're doing it for high school. Could, perhaps then we could have a clarification as to how this is a pilot. So through the chair. I just can I just, yep. through the chair, thank you. Um, so this is not a traditional, you know, we used it in middle school, we're using it in high school. We just completed a full pilot with middle school in the spring. And there were multiple teachers, principals, um, students, department heads. There were three different book choices that were included in the pilot in the spring. And this was the one that was chosen. So we went forward with this program based on the full pilot that went through in the spring. Okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, so, and then we chose, so that was how you chose the middle school curriculum and the high school curriculum is being selected because it's within the same publishing house. What I guess I'm curious as to is you're, you're describing, the administration has been describing this as a pilot. Um, pilots usually are short term, usually they're competitive. As you said, we're not doing a competitive pilot. Um, Generally, it's so that you then are trying something out before you make a large financial commitment um, and a long-term commitment. Can you please, uh, through the chair of the administration, can you please explain how, how is this a pilot? Is that what we're doing? Are we trying this out for a short period of time? Is there less of a financial commitment involved? Dr. Gans? For the chair, thank you for your question. And I, I think that's a, a great question to ask. And so we are not going through a regular pilot, and that's why I'm calling it a modified pilot. I, we have not ever been in this situation before, so we're trying to do the best that we can. And really our, our first concern is that our students have an online option at home as we're going through remote learning. So in this modified pilot, we are only going through one publishing company, and we have, I'm proposing that we work through this pilot for one school year. And that will allow all of our students to have consistent access across the district 
to have a, an online platform that will allow for an assessment cycle and to allow them to have the access to the textbook at home. We're going to collect all of our data um, through this cycle and we are going to be able to share that with all of you, with our teachers, with our principals, and then work through there to uh, make a decision moving forward. Okay. Uh, so what we are, thank you, Mr. Chair. So what we are, um, what you are asking for us to assent to this evening is a purchase of access to these materials for the length of the school year. Um, there's, there though is not going to be essentially a comparison being done. This is essentially going to be kind of an up or down pilot of um, either yes or no at the end of this year. Is that correct to the chair? Through the chair, that is correct. Okay, um, thank you. The, um, and through the chair, how much is this costing? Dr. Guinness or? Yes, through the chair, I have that number for you. The total is 256,500. And that is access for all of our students, grades nine through 12, and all of our schools and programs. And since this wasn't budgeted through the chair, um, where, where is that, that money coming from? Is Brian Allen on the phone? Or? Mrs. Dr. Benendez, Guinness, I'm sorry, you can answer that. No, 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 that's okay. Um, I, I can share that, but Mrs. Benenda, do you want to answer yeah. that? Yes, we had some funding in the foundation's budget, and so we're taking the money under the foundation's budget to pay for this. Uh, so was that through the, through the chair of the administration, is that, was that then, was that the SOA budget? Uh, or was that? The chair, that is the um, district instructional materials. District instructional yeah. materials, okay. Um, so the, um, the, there was, the beginning of part of my question um, was already being answered in terms of what materials we already have available for English. Um, teachers at this point in the high school. Um, is it possible for the administration to describe essentially kind of what the, what the, what the outline of a ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grader is? Because districts obviously handle that, that differently. And I was trying to actually evaluate it based on sort of the traditional sequence, um, but I'm not sure how, how much that's actually the sequence that's followed in the Western Public Schools. Dr. Giannis? Yes, through the chair. I'm going to um, ask Colleen Dyer, our ELA liaison, to um, help answer this question. Colleen? Ms. Dyer? Hello, through the chair. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure the question. Are you saying English one, two, three, four? Is that the question? Yes, thank you. Is that, is, so in general, are, are all of those essentially broad-based, um, you know, we're going to do different genres over the course of the year, or is there anything in particular that we focus on in, for example, I mean, traditionally, very oftentimes, grade 11 is American lit, grade 12 has been British lit, but I don't think that's actually, it didn't look to me like that was what we were setting up here. I, I was wondering exactly, essentially, how Worcester um, frames that. So in the past, it has been that, but with mm -hmm. Common Core, the, the standards are a little bit different now for 11th and 12th mm -hmm. grade. Um, and we also have the other programs in 11th and 12th grade, right. the AP classes and the College 101. So I would assume that many of the 12th graders wouldn't necessarily be using all of the program because they have the other options as well. Mm -hmm. But for, in terms of Common Core standards, which is really what we follow, it's theme-based reaching all of the Common Core standards. Mm -hmm. English 1 and 2 have the same standards and then 11 and 12, so English 3 and 4. Okay, thank you. Um, the part of what I what I actually went and looked at um, online is I, I don't know how much how familiar my colleagues are with this, but the state's actually now doing something called the Curate Project, where it actually looks at curriculum and sees how much they're aligned with the state standards. Um, I actually just fired off an email to one of the commissioners um, because I noticed that they actually haven't done any evaluation of ninth and twelfth grade curriculum, um, which I'm glad to see you nodding, Ms. <laughs> Tyre. I'm glad glad that's being used, um, which is troubling, but at sort of at a state perspective. Um, part of what I was looking at, and I was glad to see the chart here, um, but uh, was essentially kind of the distribution, right? So um, who are the authors that are being taught? In what perspective are they being taught? 
um, any good teacher, as I, has already been implied, um, honestly sees textbooks as a resource rather than a way of doing it. I will say that I, um, looking at this as someone who used um, materials like this, although not in this format, obviously, was honestly a little frustrated by the usability. Um, it was somewhat difficult to do things like go through and say, where are the short stories? Where is the poetry? Where is the, that sort of thing? Um, not entirely my problem, but I do want to recognize that it is a problem that's there. Um, the other thing, though, is that in terms of the question of um, diversity, which was mentioned here in the presentation, um, I'm glad, first of all, to see that we're actually recognizing that as an issue. It is. Um, I would hope that the authors that I was teaching 20 years ago um, are not heavily represented. The problem is that they are. Um, I, I'm actually somewhat unclear on why we're still teaching some of the authors that we are, and I suppose there's a canon in, in English literature for a reason. Um, but the, the balance of the authors is something that I wanna call to my, um, my colleagues' attention. And is not just the number of women or the number of authors of color? It's that if you go through the list and you look at where are they, there's a lot of poems, there's a lot of short stories, there's a lot of this. And then on the other side, we see Beowulf and Sir Gawain and the Green Knight and the Partner's Prologue. And um, essentially what we've got is, now I assume, because I understand how, somewhat of how curriculum works, that some of this is also, you've got to have the names of the greats in there, or there are people who are just never going to buy this. Um, but we do, as a committee, make a statement when we spend this kind of money and then send this to our English teachers to say, this is what you should be using. Um, and to the point that was made earlier, leaving them to their, virtually to their own devices in many cases in creating a diverse curriculum sends the message that that's not necessarily something that the district values in the same way. Um, so while I'm glad to see that we're at least recognizing that as something that we need to be concerned about, um, we are also a big customer. $250,000 is a lot of money. Um, our statements to our suppliers makes a difference. And I'm concerned at how much this still depends on authors like Joseph Conrad. I'm concerned that we're still gonna end up having teachers that are gonna run into what every district out there hears about every time we talk about Huckleberry Finn, which is who reads what aloud in the classroom. Um, there are actually ways of doing this that avoid these issues, Mr. Chair. Um, and what I wondered if it is in, instead of doing this, we instead push out to our teachers um, commonlit.org, for example, is widely used, um, particularly by teachers who've been spending a lot of time on this. The um, resources that are around Disrupt Texts and the book chat, and a lot of the other work that the National Council of Teachers of English and some of the subsidiary groups that have found themselves online have been doing over time. Um, I am entirely sensitive to the idea that we have teachers out there who are <clears throat> looking at their computer screens and wondering how they're going to reach their students without actually being able to hand them a, a, a book. Um, at the same time, though, it seems to me that this is a chance for us to actually instead pull ourselves back from the assumptions of the sort of publishing empires that are out there and instead say, and we actually do have the uh, manpower capacity to kind of do this sort of thing, here are the kinds of resources that are actually available online. There are people who have been teaching through Chromebooks for a good long time. We don't have to depend on McGraw-Hill to make our, our selections. Um, I have always felt, and I know I'm not alone in this, that um, the anthologies are too often a crutch for teachers who aren't really ready and willing to do their own work. Um, they can be a nice thing to use, but they also can be really easy to start on page one and finish on page whatever and answer the questions at the end of the book. Um, and I'm much less honestly concerned about these sort of scripted assessments. Uh, maybe that's an unpopular thing to say, particularly this year. But if we're really about reading and writing, then that's about reading and writing, not about what McGraw-Hill thinks is the assessment. So um, unless my colleagues have you know, particularly compelling arguments, 
I think that I'm going to come to oppose this, Mr. Chair, and suggest to the administration that we invest our time and energy in alternatives rather than invest our money in this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Molly McCullough, followed by John Mafredo. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Ganyas, for your presentation, and thank you to Ms. Novick for um, her many questions. I do believe, you know, certainly as we look at our curriculums moving forward, we're certainly looking at the diversity components and the encompassing components of all of them, and not just because it's, you know, maybe McGraw-Hill, but my question, just a follow-up question to the question about whether or not this means we have to go forward with this curriculum for next year. If we're doing a modified pilot, now granted I understand that it is, you know, costing over $250,000 for the district. Is there an opportunity to use this this year as a pilot, but still do a full pilot next year as opposed to saying this is definitely what we are moving forward with through the chair to Dr. Ganyas? Dr. Guinness? For the chair, yes, thank you for that question, Molly. And yes, absolutely. So this is this would be a one year um, pilot and we would be looking to go through a full extensive pilot of uh, the following school year. So for 2021. Um, I wanted to just add one other piece. <clears throat> I know that this, um, just the, the question about diversity and, and thinking about diverse authors and student choice is really important. Um, our entire team really looks at the framework of uni universal design for learning as we plan all of our um, professional learning opportunities, as we work with teachers. Um, we have um, Katie Novak who's speaking to all of our staff on Monday um, around the framework of universal design for learning. And really our, you know, what we say constantly is firm goals and flexible means. So the firm goals are the standards. The standards, we don't have a choice in that. We take our standard, we use that from the state. The flexible means really is how do we reach our students? How do we share um, different activities in a variety of ways to engage them? And so when we're reading you know, a book, we're really, really encouraging everyone to allow for option and choice and student engagement. So in addition to the um, 1700 books that are included on the StudySync platform, we also have Myon and Myon is um, K through 12. Our students have been using that for book choice um, starting in the spring through the summer for their summer reading and we're going to continue with Myon. And that off also offers many other options for reading materials. So within each unit, students do have the choice to choose different authors and different texts. And we really highly encourage students to do that. We want them to read authors that are engaging to them, that reflect them in the stories that talk about um, things that are relevant in their lives. And so I just wanted to also share that, that we, are, we do have that Myon app that is also through Clever and students can also choose a variety of um, options through there as well. So that is a huge consideration, something that we're you know, continuing to work on. This is an ongoing process. And um, we're also working very closely. And I know you've heard about um, Giselle um, Neep before, she is working with our entire department to really think about how do we incorporate rigor within our unit planning, lesson planning, working with teachers so that we're really um, thinking about that culturally responsive um, piece in, in every single thing we do in, in our PLCs and working with teachers and um, in planning lessons, unit and lessons for our students. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And through the, through the chair uh, to Dr. Ganyas again, if you're able to answer this question. So with the app you're referencing where, you know, we have over 1700 other options and things of that nature, is that asked of our ELA teachers through the liaison at the secondary level to be utilizing that with their students for this coming year? I know that it's an online resource right now, but is it something if we are using or if we're going to utilize this modified pilot from for this year, will it be, you know, basically a requirement of our teachers to be utilizing that in conjunction 
so that we are getting some additional diversity within the works. Um, as Ms. Novick was asking earlier, that's just something I'm curious about. And I'll, I'll ask one more question so you can answer both at the same time. And my other question would be, if we are doing this modified pilot this year, and then we have the opportunity to pilot several programs next year, what would the cost of doing a typical pilot be for the ELA curriculums for next year? And that, that's my final question. So those two questions, and then I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gaius. Uh, for the chair, I'm gonna answer the second question and I'm gonna ask um, Mrs. Dyer to answer the first question because she can really talk about how she supports teachers. Um, when we do a full pilot, there is usually little to no cost. So we ask in the past, all of our pilots, um, the materials are shared with us. So the textbooks, the online component, and the um, professional learning. Um, for the time that I have been in this position and gone through pilots, we have not had any cost for a pilot. And so um, Mrs. Dyer, can you please just refer back to that for first question? Sure, we are encouraging the use of Myon, and actually I was just speaking with a few of the department heads the other day about that. Encouraging um, the use of it by the children in terms of independent reading. So there's voice and choice. They can choose the books that they want, they can read those, and that can be part of their independent work. We talk about the synchronous and asynchronous work for this coming year. Um, in terms of adding um, different things to the, to the pilot that we're speaking of, um, it's encouraged actually. So it's, it's very theme based. So it's encouraged that if there's a book that you, you see that your, your students would really relate to and love, it's encouraged that that book be, be taught through that unit and then use the supporting texts to go along with that theme to, to really work on that synthesis part that we're trying to get with the different standards that we're meeting. So it isn't, and that's I think one of the reasons that the teachers did like the program was that it's not, that the design of it is not to be scripted. It actually has a platform in it to build your own unit. So if you are using a common lit article, if you are using something um, from another resource or a book that really meets the needs of your kids and really engages your kids, it is, it's encouraged that we, we put those in and we use those as well within the format. There actually, you can add them into the format. Right. I hope that you answers can, your questions. You, you can add a book into the format of uh, study sync. It has, a, it has a unit builder in it so that teachers can share within it, they can collaborate within it. It's, it's an entire platform. So you can use the study skills lessons, the skills lessons, and but use your structures and your novel or your short story that you might love. Um, so, and that actually is something that's very important to me as well. I think that I always like to teach a variety of different things when I was, when I was teaching. So we actually went into the middle school one and, and pulled things out and moved things around and added things that really would work for our kids. So teachers have flexibility and they go into other avenues, other sites and pull right. something in. Okay, I think that was one of the questions that was asked earlier. Okay, um, which, makes, chair, which makes me more comfortable. If but, I could just uh, add one thing uh, uh, back to Molly's question. Um, I just wanted to share that the reason why we are paying for this pilot this school year um, usually when we do a pilot, it's a small group and it's for a short amount of time. Right. And so in this case with this modified pilot, it is every single one of our students and it's for an entire year. And that's where this cost comes from. So I just okay. wanted to clarify between Thank you. the regular pilot and the modified pilot. Thank you. Gotcha. Thank you, Mr. Monfredo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I certainly want to thank uh, uh, Dr. Ganyas. Uh, for this presentation. The program by authors Fisher and um, Frey uh, does support the initiatives of the, of the district. We got to keep that in mind. Um, the lesson designed by teachers uh, is a plus for the uh, integrated reading, writing appears soon to be well done. The platform contains an amazing amount of uh, resources for us students from scaffolds to, uh, to enrichment. And I do like the idea of the teacher support uh, being given. Uh, I, I do have a problem um, with the price, uh, but I certainly know that we're in difficult times in remote learning uh, in, as we uh, go forward with uh, remote learning, but it, uh, it is going to benefit our students, and that's, and that's the overlying uh, issue I think uh, we need to decide on tonight. And, um, and I'm not going to certainly micromanage uh, the excellent presentation uh, by your Dr. Dungarnas, 
Uh, for I know lots of uh, thought has gone into uh, this uh, selection. And so, uh, yes, I will support the program. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Foley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hopefully you can hear me with my new technology here. Um, just a couple of quick questions if I can. One is, um, in the structure of the, of the curriculum that's here, um, there's a baseline expectation of number of materials, number of books and poems, et cetera, and authors that are being read, but teachers can certainly craft their own direction and exceed that baseline. Is that, that correct? Dr. Guinness? Yes, through the chair, yes, that is correct. They, and, and, um, there is but, a component in each unit for the teachers to add their own pieces and to encourage their students to for choice and um, engagement of their of the books that they would like to read. Yes. And, and, and we will be monitoring the number of books, the number of authors, et cetera, so that we'll have a sense. I, I, some of my concern in the past has been the inconsistent nature of some uh, some teachers are signing a large number of great books and others have it just a handful and the, the the rigor was different from one one teacher to another so we're going to be monitoring this as well with a chair um i i do want to share that um all lesson plans individual teachers lesson plans do go to their principal so um we're working very closely to share all of this information with our principals and with our department heads so um, they're also monitoring the individual school, um, the, the teachers at the school level um, through their department chairs. Um, Mrs. Dyer can speak to this. She does meet monthly with the department heads to share district information and guidelines with the department heads. And then they, from there, are going back to their individual schools and then working closely with their individual teachers. We're also going to share an overview with our principals so that they understand the outline of the program and what the expectations are. And then the principals will also be working closely with their teachers at the school level. And, that, and that's Mr. helpful. I, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Dye, did you want to comment too? Or? I think that anything that's new, you know, it, it takes time to build it and learn it and work together. So that is what we will be doing during many of our meetings and what the teachers will be doing when they're collaborating as well working together to, to take all the, the, the positive things that we can take out of it and make, make it into a solid curriculum for our kids. Yeah, the, 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 the biggest concern I have is really the timing. And I, I think it's unfortunate that we're all here trying to have a, a, an exceptional meeting, trying to approve a, a curriculum for the year that's gonna be implemented across the entire district. Um, as I understand it, it's really to promote the remote learning. And that, that's part of it. I, um, I, I would hope that we can incorporate some, I mean, I, I hate to spend the money and the time across the entire district and then go to a totally different model a year from in some ways. I don't know if we can incorporate some of this into our planning for the following years, but um, I just wish we had more time as a school committee to get some more feedback and not feel as rushed into this as we do. But I I will support it. I think it's the, you know, I think with remote learning and the need that there, I'll, I'll support the, the program, but I just wish we weren't at this, at the 11th hour having to make a decision. Um, okay, anybody else? Mr. Mayor, I'm gonna um, unmute Diana. Just, I'm not sure she can unmute herself. So. Okay, don't go to Mrs. Clancy after that. Okay. Um, Diana? All right, there she is. Okay, okay. Thank, you. Ms. okay. thank you very much uh, for the presentation this evening. I certainly appreciate it. It sounds as though um, we're looking at diversity. We're adding in some pieces to what we need to do. Um, I would like to make a motion uh, that we receive a report in January, um, how this is working, what um, challenges we've had, and what success stories. And um, if it's possible to also include the variety um, that we have used to uh, ensure, as um, my colleague brought up, uh, that we want to make sure that we touch upon different authors and so on, so we can uh, partake in this because we don't know what's going to be in January. We don't know how that's uh, what's going to happen. And I think uh, when we look at something like this, uh, we take it seriously because of the cost, 
but also the work uh, that the administration has put behind this. I certainly do appreciate you and didn't respond um, with excellent responses. And um, I feel as though moving forward with this is certainly the way to go. Uh, but I'd like to hear back in maybe January or February, whatever's convenient for administration. That would be my motion. Okay, we'll Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Bean and Carrie. Our next uh, school committee member, uh, Mrs. Clancy. So I just have one question. So through the chair to Dr. Ganez, I just want to know, are we going to be able to train and support our teachers um, with this new curriculum during this time, especially given everything else that we have to do to get them ready um, for this coming school year? And then be something that you are confident that we're going to be able to do. This is Goddard. For the chair, thank you for that question. And yes, I am confident that we are going to be able to train our teachers. We've already um, asked the publishing company to hold several dates for us in the event that this was approved this evening. And so we have multiple sessions planned um, to give our teachers an overview, to give our coaches an overview. Our principals are going to be invited to join. And um, we're going to give an overview, not just of the um, platform. We were able to secure the um, one of the authors of the book, Catlin Tucker, that I mentioned earlier, to be able to um, review this with our teachers as well. So I'm excited to um, be able to integrate that piece of technology. So we have multiple opportunities um, to be able to train our teachers um, in the 12 days um, ahead of the students starting. And we'll also have follow-up sessions um, with uh, Mrs. Dyer, but also with the publishing company. Okay. Okay. But, uh, Mrs. Clint. Okay, Mrs. Clint is all set. I think I'm going to I'm going to support this also. I think this is a good program. I know it's uh, you know we should so we maybe get a little more time. I understand that. This online is so important that we do this right. And uh, I know there's a lot of the school systems, even college universities, even UMass bought a, bought a company, bought another school to do their online learning. Um, so we take it seriously. And I think this is a, uh, you know, it's a modified pilot and which I'm fine with that. We evaluate at the end of the year. And it does give flexibility to the teachers to go outside of uh, study sync and bring something into the system. So uh, I think we're going down the right track. And I do support, um, Ms. B. and Carrie's motion to uh, bring this, uh, uh, get an update in January, how we're doing and evaluate this. Uh, I just want our kids to get the best education possible. And I think giving the teachers some flexibility with this and also having a program in place is gonna be very helpful. Um, with that, I don't know, Bob, you wanna open it up? I, I'm looking at the participants. I think most of them are teachers, but, uh, or administrators. Does anybody wanna speak on this, do you think? Or, there's like five, no. six people on the, there are no hands raised. Um, okay. Okay. So. Any hands? Okay. Nope. Let, me look. Let me look real quick again. No, there are no hands. I think most of them are teachers or administrators. Okay. Okay. Um, so the motion is to uh, approve the uh, pilot high school ELA virtual curriculum for 2021 and also get an update in January for how the program's doing, all the pros and cons uh, with that. So Mr. Chair? On that, yeah, Ms. Novick? May I ask a procedural question? Sure. Uh, if it is a, a one-year pilot, um, it thus would need consideration sort of one way or the other moving forward. Um, when is it that the administration would anticipate getting back to us with their recommendation for high school curriculum for next year through the chair? Um, uh, Madam Superintendent, or Ms. Uh, Dr. Guinness, so. everybody's on mute, so let's let you know. We don't. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, is that uh, regarding the whole curriculum or just the pilot? So, I, I guess essentially, I would. I'm wondering when you would be coming back to us and saying, "Yes, we want to renew this further," or "No, we're going to do something okay. else." I, I think we would know by May uh, of next year. 
Okay. Um, I, I ask, of course, because this is a, as was already noted, this is a major financial commitment um, and whether or not it gets included in next year's budget is obviously something that's um, of consideration. Um, so, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Novick. Uh, okay. So, roll call. Ms. Biancaria. <laughs> Diana. One. Let me, let me get her unmuted one second. All right, Diana, you're unmuted. Yes. This is Clancy. Is Laura still there? I think she was shading out. Laura, Did you listening. hear my yes? Yes, yes we yes. heard yours, Diana. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So Laura Clancy is a yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Ms. McCullough? Yes. Mr. Monfredo? Yes. Ms. Novick? No. And Mayor Petty? Uh, yes. Okay, with that, uh, I just want to thank everybody for taking the time out again. I know people are on vacation, and I do appreciate the school committee administration working through the summer. And uh, you're doing a good job, so keep it up. Dr. Guinness, good presentation. Ms. Dye, a great job tonight. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, with that, we're going to have a motion to adjourn. Uh, before I do that, can we, can we get an update maybe for the next uh, meeting uh, next week to talk about the sport, to get a report where we are, what, you know, what we're doing here in Worcester? Is that possible? Um, Mayor? Yeah. On, on sports, so we'll actually have an agenda item uh, the school committee has to vote on uh, because we're a uh, yellow district. So we have to have a vote of the school committee to okay. Uh, sports for next year. So we'll be presenting okay. that as a voting item uh, for the 27th. What, what time are we meeting on uh, next week? Is it going to be a long meeting? Do we have a lot? 4 p.m. We have a lot. Oh, we're at 4 p.m.? Right. Oh, okay. so we'll meet early. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure this we have the summer. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay, so the uh, motion is to adjourn. Ms. Bianca area? Yes! Mrs. Clancy? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Ms. McCullough? Yes. Mr. Monfredo? Yes. yes. Ms. Novick? Yes. And Mayor Pet? Yes. I right, gotta love technology. But uh, <laughs> I, get to, I get to see everybody's home, I get to see everybody's cars. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so enjoy the rest of your summer, and uh, we'll see everybody next week. Thank, Thank you, so you very much. much. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.